In the previous video, we mentioned that once you find an area of interest for winter recreation, you may want to interpolate what may develop at that location by looking at a forecast. There are a number of forecasts that stretch out by weeks or even months. However, the further away you get from the present, the less accurate they become. And as we saw in the previous video, at the moment, the accuracy of the European and US flagship model runs is proving to be a challenge for forecasters. In this video, we take an in-depth look at using a snow forecasting tool from the National Weather Service's Weather Prediction Center that will take us forward by up to 72 hours and thus offer us a higher degree of confidence in the near-term forecast for precipitation. This tool has a plethora of options for giving substance to a probability forecast for freezing rain and snow accumulation and covers continental USA as well as the southern areas of Canada. You can fine-tune the display to show snowfall accumulations from 1 to greater than 30. In this video, we are concerned with the snow and we will bring you up to speed to facilitate a quick start if the task of getting a quick and reliable snow forecast, if this is of interest to you. Now I'm going to turn you over to John Kellis to walk you through the rest of our video. This is the chart that we are going to start with today. It is the WPC Probabilistic Winter Precipitation Guidance Chart from the National Weather Service. This represents the default view that you are going to see when you land on the page. And the chart itself, the mapping section of it, is fairly small in terms of your overall real estate on your monitor. So the first thing that I would do would be go into my zoom settings for the browser that I'm using and bring that up to around 150 percent. And now you're going to be able to get a better overview of the areas that you want to focus on and then you can grab the image by holding down your left mouse button, drag the map into the, and what I would say is bring the area that you want to focus on into the middle of the window and then use your mouse wheel to zoom in on the area that you want to focus on. So for me, for example, I'm in Banff outside of Calgary. This is how I would view the area. Now that we have the map showing at a zoom level that we're comfortable with, I want to curate some of the parameters in order to get the data reported that I'm seeking. And to do that, I will scroll back up. I'm going to want to go out to the 72 hour forecast. The ESRI maps are the best looking that we're going to want. Probability forecasts are the product that we want and the precipitation type in our case is snow. Then the amount of snow as you increase the amount that you want to look at, this represents how much snow has accumulated up to the 72 hour point in this chart. And you can go either direction. You can start out with the two inch, then go up from there if you want to see how much is accumulating. Let's look at that now. And I have the state boundaries uh, selected here in order for me uh, one of the things that um, me being in Canada is the boundary of Idaho here moves up that simulates the uh, Canadian the Rockies at uh, where the Canadian Rockies come down into the US and so then I can interpolate the extension of that line to get a general idea of how this is going to affect my location. I like my opacity to be up at 100%, but that's just a personal preference. You can play with those settings and see what works for you. You can see the color codes here where the darkest red would represent uh, between 95 to 100% probability of you getting two inches or more at that location. In order to see how much snow we are going to be expecting, 
I can now cycle by moving in an ascending value up into four inches of snow and then eight inches and watch the shading change as we get over here. Now the area of interest where we can see where we're going to be getting a significant amount of snow is along the west slope of the Rockies into British Columbia in the region of uh, Nelson Castle Guard and moving down into Idaho. You can also see in the Cascades and the coastal ranges where there is a high probability of significant precipitation coming in for this date and this is valid at 12 UTC you'll have to convert to the area you're in and see how that affects you that's January 5th through January 8th because we're still seeing precipitation at greater than or equal to 8 inches we're going to move up to 12 18 and you can see that now we are changing the probability that we're going to get more than 12 inches and this area is starting to diminish but we still have a lot of precip coming in to the lower mainland in Vancouver and around Seattle in Washington State. Then if we move up to 24 inches that would be concerning to anyone that's in these areas and in this area when you get up into the coast mountains north of Vancouver of course you're going to be seeing some snowfall and also rain down in the lower mainland. Finding the boundary between the freezing rain and the snow can be challenging if we go over to freezing rain now we can see what they were expecting for the freezing rain in through the coast mountains and in the Seattle area and it looks more probable that they're forecasting the snow for it and again we have to go back over here to get those values back again now that'll get you basically started with this uh, awesome forecasting tool but before we leave I would just like to shortly touch upon over here in the left side of the column we have QPF and PQPF and QPF stands for the quantitative precipitation forecasts and the PQPF stands for the probabilistic quantitative precipitation forecasts and those will also potentially be of interest to you I would advise that you go over and play with that for example uh, you can go out to seven day totals on that one and end up getting something like this you can uh, also play around uh, with a lot of the settings and then if we go to the probabilistic forecasting you can play around with a lot of options there choose a time format or you can choose an amount and again this is expressed in inches because it is a product to say go out to day three for example take a look at those before you leave the site and see if you can get any value from them and then we'll see you in the next one if I come across anything that's worthy of um, consideration for your snow forecasting I'll be sure to touch on it in future episodes